Morning, all. Welcome to PTS Dan and Lee, Dan Hudock, Lee Frank, or who we like to call Frank Lee. <laughs> so let's talk about bonding and rapport. Dan, you and I have touched on this. And again, just, just keeping with those fundamentals and keeping them tight is really important. So two parties meet, salesperson, prospect. If you're meeting in the prospect's office, which is our world of B2B sales, that kind of stuff, you see what's happening. And oftentimes in that bonding and rapport opening phase, if you prefer kind of small talk mentality, we latch on to things that are disturbing, <laughs> uncomfortable. I don't know what to call it. Really. We latch on to things that are weird. Like we always use the example about don't talk about the fish on the wall, but walk us through what bonding and rapport isn't and what it should be and how to get better at it. It's not manipulation. It's not a way to break the ice. So you walk in and you see a fish on the wall and you comment on that. Salespeople think that's bonding and rapport. It's, it's the opposite. It's actually building a wall up, not bringing a wall down. And the reason for that is because most salespeople talk about the fish on the wall. Yeah. So if you want to be salesy, if you want to be known as that sales guy or saleswoman, please do all the things that every salesperson does. Oh, I see you like golf as I look at the golf clubs in the corner, right? So quit talking about the things that every other salesperson is talking about. So what is bonding and rapport? It's, it's really, a, it's a psychological thing. It's a way where a person at the subconscious level views you as someone that's like them. Yeah. All things being equal, people will buy from people that they like, people that they trust, and people that are more like them. So if the buyer is drinking a cup of coffee and you're drinking a cup of coffee, there's a connection there. If the buyer is drinking a cup of coffee and you're not, you have missed it. And so it's these little subtle things. But let's dive a little deeper. What can you do about it? You need to research it. Look up body language, which is more than half of the communication done face to face. When was the last time you, whoever's watching this, actually researched body language? Look for signs on the faces. Look for the shoulder. Look for the way the feet are, are pointed. Look for the locking of the ankles. When do we research this stuff? And, and, and learning all that gives us tremendous insight into who the buyer is. And frankly, at the end of the day, what influences them so that they're more willing to share their issues and problems. Got it. On sneaking in, frankly, into the conversation. Right. Speaking of so, color. right. So Lee, obviously you, you, some of it's from a different side, but, but a lot of what you talk with us about is how you do to differentiate, but stay true to yourself, but not sound and be numbing or fall in with the noise of everybody else. And that's part of what, what Dan's describing there. But can you talk yeah. about it from your perspective, bonding and rapport and differentiation? Absolutely. Well, I think I, I, I just want to go back to one of the things that Dan said, which was talking about trust. Okay. Like bonding and rapport is not like putting on, I don't want to say putting on airs, but it, it's not, it, it's about being genuine. It's about being your genuine self and not, you know, making something up to try to force a connection. Yes. It's about just being a genuine person. And you can be a genuine person and be interested in things that aren't your interest. You can be a genuine person and develop those relationships. Um, so I think that's a, a really big piece uh, of the puzzle is that sort of genuine trust building. I think the other piece too is that it, this can take time. I mean, this is not necessarily like, you know, an instantaneous on your first meeting we talk about the the process all of the time and that this is a thing that you you grow and and you grow that rapport and you know the first time we met you would have never called me frankly it, you know, right. no it's a great example yeah. yeah but it's it's those things that as you you know learn people and uh, like i said things can and even as dan said it with coffee it doesn't have to be your hobbies it doesn't have to be your you know this thing that that draws you together. Your kids don't have to go to the same school. It can be small things. It can be things like we both really like to binge watch TV and it doesn't even have to be the same things. But yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of different things to talk about. And the, the body language of course is important. And there's a whole lot of discussion about mirroring and, um, you know, making sure that you're paying attention and kind of giving it back. Yeah. 
Well, and I think we've all had that, what you almost, what you described there of, we've all had that time and it usually happens at some kind of an event, but you stop and you start talking to somebody and there's that awkwardness and then suddenly somebody just drops their head once because they don't know how to engage. You right. can't get out of that sales meeting. You're you're in a meeting. There's no right. disengage and walk out the door because it's not going that way. So Dan, can you talk a little bit about how to get better at it, building a bank of questions that work well with business owners and decision makers and the value of, of doing that. Um, and it's not about sounding canned, if you will. So research best questions to ask a business owner or a office yeah. manager, whoever you're going to meet, Google that, write down a couple, try them out. If you like yeah. the way they sound, keep them. If you don't slide one out, put another one in and eventually you'll get a bag of three or four or five questions that you like to answer or ask. But, but here's the thing at the end of the day, it's not about what you say. It's what you look like as you say it. So really concentrate on the body language aspect and the tonality way more than what it is you're actually saying. Yeah. And to your point, you're setting the tone for the rest of the time. So one last thing, can you leave people with a couple examples of questions you ask business owners? Yeah. How in the world did you ever start this company? Okay. Or as you look at the marketplace today, what's your competition doing that you're not? There we go. A couple of great questions, get them talking about their baby and what they do all day, every day. And starts to to bring the two parties together so and listen, yep. listen. can't listen enough all right everybody thanks so much see you again tomorrow take care